Suppose I give you a list of vectors. The question is, how are we going to know whether that list of vectors is linearly dependent or linearly independent? So first I'm going to remind ourselves what our definition of linearly dependent and independent was from the previous video. In either case, we had to do the same thing, which was to look at this expression where you take a linear combination of the vectors and you set it at zero. And then the question was, is it the case that forces all of the coefficients to be zero, in which case you got linearly independent, or could you find some non-trivial set of coefficients, some coefficients where at least one of them was non-zero, which would therefore give you linearly dependent? So that's the scenario that we're looking at here. So let's give a specific example. I've got three different vectors, and the question is, are they linearly dependent or are they linearly independent? I'm going to give a little bit of a shorthand here. I'm going to call this the vector v1, this the vector v2, and this the vector v3. And then now that I've named these three vectors, what I'm looking at is their linear combination. So I want to look at some coefficient times the first vector a1, a1 times v1, plus a second coefficient a2 times the second vector v2, and a third coefficient a3 times a third vector v3. And what I want to do is I want to set all of these equal to zero. And the question is, what am I going to get with my coefficients? Now, we should have seen something that looks like this before. What we have is precisely a linear combination of vectors. And linear combinations of vectors we interpreted as being a matrix vector product. So what we have over here, this entire expression, is the same thing as the matrix whose columns are the three different vectors. So the first column is v1, the second column is v2, and the third column is v3, multiplied by the vector that is the components a1, a2, and a3. So that is, anytime I have a linear combination, I can use the definition of the matrix vector product to rewrite that linear combination as some matrix times some particular vector. And then we're trying to claim that this is going to equal the vector 0, 0, 0. So let's actually do this, but for our particular choice of vectors. As in, what I'm going to have if I substitute in for my three vectors is the matrix first column is the first vector, minus 1, 0, 2. Second column is the second vector, minus 2, 3, minus 2, 2. And the third column is the third vector, 5, 2, minus 6. And then I've got three components, a1, a2, a3. And we're wondering whether this can be equal to 0, 0, 0. Don't be confused, by the way. Sometimes in the past, we've referred to the columns of the matrix A as being like the vector a1 and the vector a2 and the vector a3. This is not the case in this scenario. In this scenario, the coefficients, which are going to become the vector in our matrix, are just a1, a2, and a3. And the columns of the matrix are called v1, v2, and v3, three different vectors. Regardless, what we have now is just some linear system of equations. And I know how to solve this. This is a, this is a homogeneous system of linear equations. I can even go and put it into its augmented matrix form. That's where I just copy out the coefficient matrix. And then I'm going to make an augmented matrix by putting in the constants, which are all zeros over here. So this is an augmented system. And then I know how to deal with these augmented matrices. I'm going to do a bunch of elementary row operations, and I'm going to put it into row echelon form. So if I haven't made any mistakes, I've got into a correct row echelon form. And what I want to notice is that this particular system has a leading one in every single row and column. In other words, it has a unique solution. So if I just look down here at the third row, what I'm left with is minus 1 times a3 is equal to 0. And that tells me that a3, my third variable here, has to be 0. So I'm going to get that a3 is equal to 0. And then if I look at the second row, we're also going to have that 1 times a2, there's no a3s around, is equal to 0. And that's going to tell me that a2 
is going to be 0. And likewise, for the same basic idea, so too will be a1. So all three of my variables, a1, a2, and a3, turn out to be 0. But if I go back to what I was doing at the beginning, I started with this linear combination where the a1, the a2, and the a3 were the scalars in the linear combination. I asserted the linear combination was 0, and what I have deduced out of that is that my three different variables, the a1, the a2, and the a3, my three scalars, are all 0. And so it's going to be linearly independent. However, if we had chosen a different example where I didn't have a leading one going down in every single column, then it could have been that we had a free column. We would have put in a parameter. We have infinitely many different non-zero solutions. We'd, we'd have the zero solution as well, for sure. But we'd also have this infinitely many different non-zero solutions. And therefore, we would have gotten it being linearly dependent. But we don't have a free column in this situation. We only have the unique solution. And if it's homogeneous and it's unique, the only possibility is zero because the zero solution is always a solution to a homogeneous system. So now we should know if I give you any list of vectors, you put them into their matrix form, you put it down into its row echelon form, you solve that system, and that will tell you whether it's linearly independent when there's only just the one trivial solution or linearly dependent when you can find families of non-trivial solutions.